It's this Sunday that the Academy Awards ceremony, presented by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, will be held for the 90th time and it's also the very first time that I will talk about how I would vote and also what I think will actually win. So let's get started. Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage and I like the Oscars. I've been following the award shows for about 10 years now and it has become a tradition that me and my fellow movie nerd friends meet and watch the whole ceremony together and because it won't begin before 2 o'clock a.m. here in Austria, we always compile a pre-show movie program that's somehow Oscar related. This year we will watch some of the best documentary shorts, the animated feature film nominee, the breadwinner, some old animated shorts which were awarded in the past and also the Bundy classic movie show, just for the fun of it. That was a beautiful, lovely movie. I saw 22 Hooters, a bunch of guys were killed, had no story at all. It had, it had everything. I think it's obvious that the Oscar is just the prize, but I want to point it out anyway. It doesn't have to mean anything for one personally and there are many limitations to it. A film that wins the Oscar doesn't actually have to stand the test of time and movies that don't find recognition often turn out to be far more influential and special. It's also an American award which automatically limits the scope immensely and only very few foreign language films are even considered. One can also call the whole affair self-indulgent, but what the heck, I just enjoy talking and predicting and celebrating the thing and today I want to talk about the biggest categories, what I think will win, what I hope will win and also if I would have added something to the list. The first category I want to include is best visual effects and the nominees are Blade Runner 2049, Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2, Kong Skull Island, Star Wars The Last Jedi and War for the Planet of the Apes. In my book this should and probably will go to War for the Planet of the Apes, which was one of my absolute favorite movies of 2017 and the big reason for that was the lead character Caesar. How he was portrayed by Andy Serkis and how the filmmakers accomplished to bring those apes to life over the course of three movies. I'm not one of those people who think Circus himself should get a nomination as best leading actor because I still think it would be unfair since there's so much done in post-production to his performance. But I think those special effects which were nominated for three times now should win. The next category on my list is also a technical one. Best Film Editing. And the nominees are Baby Driver, Dunkirk, I, Tonya, The Shape of Water and Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Again, my prediction and personal favorite are the same. Christopher Nolan's Dunkirk. Because not only was it edited in a fascinating way, but it was also something I really haven't seen done before and to do it in such a big blockbuster was something else. Nolan arranges three different places of action to one cohesive narrative, but what's so special about it is that those three settings each follow a different progression of time. One contains a whole week, one a day and the third only one hour. It was remarkable and exciting and I think the editing should win the Oscar. My next pick is Best Original Score and to be completely honest, I have listened to all of them at least once, but I'm not super familiar with them to the point that I could pick a true personal favorite. The nominees are Dunkirk, Phantom Thread, The Shape of Water, Star Wars The Last Jedi and Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. As a big fan I'm leaning towards Star Wars, but I think that Alexander Desplat's score for The Shape of Water will take this. The nominees for Best Cinematography are Blade Runner 2049, Darkest Hour, Dunkirk, Mudbound, which is the one film here that I haven't seen and The Shape of Water. I would go either with The Shape of Water or Blade Runner 2049 and I think that the latter will win. It was a truly beautifully filmed motion picture and it is Roger Deakins' 14th nomination. He's one of the very best and so far he has never won. I think this might finally be his year. The next category is Best Original Screenplay, for which the nominees are The Big Sick, Get Out, Lady Bird, The Shape of Water and Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. While The Shape of Water was my favorite film of the year, I think that Jordan Peele's screenplay for Get Out was so clever and tightly structured that I would give the Oscar to that one. But it's a category that I find really hard to predict. Which applies even more to Best Adapted Screenplay in which the nominees are Call Me By Your Name, The Disaster Artist, Logan, Molly's Game and Mudbound. 
Here I don't really think I'm qualified since I haven't seen Mudbound and Molly's game. I think the Disaster Artist was a gem, but my guess is call me by your name. Now we are coming to the four acting categories and we are starting with Best Supporting Actress. The nominees are Mary J. Blige for Mudbound, Addison Janey for Itania, Leslie Manville for Phantom Thread, Laurie Metcalf for Ladybird and Octavia Spencer for The Shape of Water. This might be one of this year's most certain locks. Addison Janey will very likely win this for her portrayal as a cold, ruthless, always pushing mother of Tonya Harding in I, Tonya. But I would also be very happy with Laurie Metcalf who plays the complete opposite type of mom in Lady Bird. I remember very fondly how I left the cinema after that movie and instantly hoped that Metcalf would get nominated. I would have also been very happy if they included Holly Hunter for yet another mother in the big sick, but in the end there are just five slots. The nominees for Best Supporting Actor are Willem Dafoe for The Florida Project, Woody Harrelson for Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, Richard Jenkins for The Shape of Water, Christopher Plummer for All the Money in the World, which is the one that I haven't seen, and Sam Rockwell, again for Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. I think this one will be 50-50 for Willem Dafoe and Sam Rockwell. I would love to see Dafoe win his first Oscar, which would also be kind of a lifetime achievement thing. But then again, Sam Rockwell was really hitting more of my buttons. First, he was introduced as this despicable, stupid, racist cop. But as the movie progressed, he showed that there was more to him and he also got some redeeming qualities. Rockwell is also one of my favorite actors ever since his great performance as head thug in Turtles. We have a loyalty to the Shredder. The nominees for Best Actress are Sally Hawkins for The Shape of Water, Frances McDormand for Three Billboards Outside Emmy, Missouri, Margot Robbie for I, Tanya, Saoirse Ronan for Lady Bird and this newcomer Meryl Streep for The Post. Like the Supporting Actress category, I think this one is also a pretty certain lock. My personal pick and who will very probably win is Frances McDormand and absolutely deserved so. And now for Best Actor. First the nominees. Timothy Chalamet for Call Me By Your Name, Daniel Day-Lewis for Phantom Thread, Daniel Kaluuya for Get Out, Gary Oldman for Darkest Hour and Denzel Washington for Roman J. Israel Esquire. Which is the only film out of the five that I haven't seen. So I can't say really anything about Denzel's performance, only that I didn't hear anybody really talk about it. If I could add one to the list, it would probably be James Franco for his portrayal as Tommy Wiseau in The Disaster Artist. Phantom Thread might end up being Daniel day Lewis's last film and once again he's great. But I think that either Gary Oldman or the super young Timothy Chalamet will make it. My bet is Oldman and my personal pick would also be him. It was just fascinating to watch and I loved how he pulled off both the vulnerable outsider side of Churchill and of course the loud and imposing one as well. And now the nominees for Best Director. We got Christopher Nolan for Dunkirk, Jordan Peele for Get Out, Greta Gerwig for Lady Bird, Paul Thomas Anderson for Phantom Thread and Guillermo del Toro for The Shape of Water, who I hope and think will win this. I loved every second of that film and del Toro is an absolute auteur who is in full control of all things in his works. He's also the one guy who I didn't even consider coming back with such an astonishing heartfelt film. I was always an admirer of his work but never completely in love and also very unsatisfied by his later films. But The Shape of Water was simply wonderful. It's also great to see two newcomers up there with Jordan Peele and Greta Gerwig. If I could add one, it would definitely be Martin McDonough for Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. His movie is nominated for seven awards, including three actors who he directed, of whom probably two will win. Alright, but now to the big prize. Oh, before we go there, a quick look at this year's nominees for Best Animated Feature, which will be the evening's easiest log of all time. It's the Boss Baby, of course. No, it won't. It will very likely be Pixar's Coco. Unfortunately, I haven't seen the rest yet. As I told you at the beginning, we are about to watch the breadwinner before the ceremony, which is nominated alongside Boss Baby, Coco, Ferdinand and Loving Vincent. It looks very promising, but in the end I think Coco will win this. This year we got 9 nominees in the Best Picture category. Call Me By Your Name, Darkest Hour, Dunkirk, Get Out, Lady Bird, Phantom Thread, The Post, The Shape of Water and last but definitely not least, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. If there's one movie that I wish would have made the list, it is Sean Baker's The Florida Project, to which I go back and back in my mind. 
or make that two movies because I was kind of bummed that the fantastic The Big Sick wasn't on there as well. My guess is that either The Shape of Water or Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri will take the win. And I would be very happy with both of them. But I'm rooting for Del Toro's beautiful adult fairy tale, which was also my favorite film from last year. So these are my picks for Sunday and now I want to know what you think will win. Do you think The Shape of Water might sweep or maybe Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri? Or maybe there will be a big surprise, or they might spread their words over many different movies. We will see. Until next time, you can hit me up on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram simply at the Jimmy Cage. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like. And make sure you hit that bell for all I have to tell. Mm -hmm.